I just want to welcome you all to our new, uh, to our second episode of season two of Artists Stop Being Poor podcast, videocast. Um, today we have a very exciting guest, my, my former protege. It's a little bit like when Batman had Robin and then Robin graduated and become Nightwing. So today we have my former Robin, we have Vanessa Soli. Uh, that, I don't know, five years ago, four years ago, uh, came knocking in my uh, metaphorical door saying that she had just moved to Berlin, that she wanted to get into the art business, that she wanted to curate, that she wanted to put her fancy arts management degree to good use, and that she wanted to learn from the best. Actually, she didn't say that she wanted to learn from the best. She just wanted to learn from anybody that was available to teach her uh, a, a little bit of, of, of the dirty side of, of the art world. And honestly, I, I only think that you get to learn the dirty side of the art world by getting dirty. You, you, don't, you don't learn the stuff that, that, that I learned in school. I didn't learn it in university. I didn't learn it in marketing school. I didn't you learn it in art school either. So I just figured out, you know, yes, I need some help. Vanessa uh, was so generous to, to, to want to help me in the project of Asukha. She, she found it interesting. She saw it as, as, as a valid opportunity lesson. And uh, we worked together, I guess, for like two, two years, three years. Um, and then when... Um, Asuka is still here, so but uh, Vanessa started doing her own projects and building her own art world expertise and, and starting her own stuff. And so without any further delay, I would like to introduce you guys to Vanessa Soli and let her talk a little bit about, you know, the art world. Hi, hey, Vanessa. It's nice to see you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for this amazing invitation. I, uh, I was so looking forward to work with you again and to have the opportunity to actually uh, talk to each other a little bit more in the public, uh, the public scene, we could call it like that, like we used to and I really miss actually uh, doing our uh, dirty plans together and strategies. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for inviting me here today with these fabulous artists um, that are here also with us. And um, I'm really happy, maybe I can start with something a bit optimistic. I'm really happy that uh, um, we are uh, here together because actually, uh, you know, we keep uh, hearing this buzz about uh, COVID all the time and that it has such a detrimental effect on human relations. And I'm very happy to say that I feel that uh, it's not like that. And I feel actually that uh, we are in contact with each other more than ever. In my opinion, the last year, the last year, the last months, I've had more calls with people than ever. I've had more communication with people than ever. And I'm really happy that this is actually now I mean, uh, something with, with which has much more content because I feel that uh, you talk with people, but there is a lot of content in the discussion. So you no longer have this kind of running around format in Berlin where you have so many openings every day. You just go from place to place and you have this small talk and um, sometimes doesn't necessarily mean that has a lot of uh, potential or anything. It's just that I feel that in this, this in this period of Corona, we had the time for a lot of quality exchange to think to think things in a new way, to rethink situations, to rethink about ourselves, about our art, about our practice, my practice as a curator, and uh, find new formats, find new ways to uh, promote the content and other work. And um, I find this an extreme, uh, extreme valuable time that it has been till now. And um, it, uh, I think it's uh, great that we are also doing this uh, tonight and that we get the chance to talk uh, about some cool projects and about some cool content. Yeah, and in, in other scenarios, we would have had this conversation over a couple of glasses of free shitty wine in a gallery, and um, that, that 
that is not possible anymore. So the other option would be to every artist become a hermit for, you know, while Corona lasts until we go back into, you know, the normal mode of meeting people in galleries and exhibitions. Or we could rethink a format and create these online communities of artists. And if you really think about the bigger picture of the art world, it's it's all community based. Communities are the most important thing of the art world. And if we cannot meet, you know, for a, a beer or two after the um, the exhibition opening, you know, we we will have to do it online. And I think that. Um, there's always in the art world, no, not specifically in Berlin, but there's always this this blah 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 talk. You know, it's like, yeah, let's do something together, let's collaborate someday. And I think that with Corona, we kind of trimmed the fat on on our art world communications and became much more project focused and and you know having meaningful conversations with other creatives that lead into these projects and lead into I guess that that without sounding exaggerated or or without trying to be uh, overly uh, polemic, we are soft core here uh, revolutionizing the art world because um, before Corona, no gallery in the world would want to sell their art online or put it on their website or participate in a virtual art fair. You know, I was you know one of the only idiots you know pushing people to. To, to sell art online and to, to use the internet to, to grow their, their, their art business and to, to, to focus on, on creating an art business, you know, and a marketing strategy for their art careers. And now it seems like everybody cut, caught up a little bit, you know, it's like, I, I don't want to be the, the prophet of the apocalypse saying like, I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, I also realized from my last project, um, which was a lot of work uh, with 50 Berlin-based and international artists, uh, it was now in January and uh, February, so pretty much at the core of the new lockdown, and uh, I was also a bit frustrated in the beginning, and I thought, oh my god, what am I going to do? I'm, I am also not so like uh, prepared for new formats, I haven't done my research on tools, I haven't done my research on what the whole of resources that I have, and um, I felt for a second I felt very uh, unprepared. Then, then of course there were many artists who said, "Well, but this is not a normal exhibition, and this is not a normal opening." And uh, you had these comments, you know, like, "Of course it's normal," and I completely understand that people see it like this. I mean, it's a new thing. It's uh, it's for me. It's the future just came earlier. That's how I feel about Corona. It was uh, just a catalyst uh, to uh, to some future development that was going to happen sooner or later, but it just helped it uh, happen earlier. And um, as I was saying, uh, I was not so prepared, but then uh, after I did these things uh, and I, I said to myself, I will just not let myself be demotivated by the situation. I will just do whatever is possible. I'll do my best. And then uh, it actually worked perfectly and uh, we sold of works we sold a couple of expensive works uh, people were seeing the exhibition online people were sending emails saying they want to visit it or they want to know information about this or the other artwork um we had a tv uh, reportage we had press uh we had uh we had a 3d tour we had uh i did a full hd uh, full length hd uh, curator's tour with a professional uh, video editor together and i was talking about the artworks and uh all of that and uh it's a thing it's a time where uh it's a great opportunity to create sustainable um uh, documentation of your work so if before you were more preoccupied with uh buying uh wine and taking care of the bar and making sure that you have enough drinks for the night then i think this time now you can actually afford on actually creating some very nice footage of your work or some very nice um documentation some documentary or some sort of inter uh, some sort of uh, photo photograph uh, photography or uh, anything that can be uh, beneficial for your work and uh, in this uh, in this case i've realized completely how uh, 
important time off was from a reality because there was another reality that was happening at the same time and um, with Corona there was a time to develop this reality to actually find the time to see what one can do with these tools and uh, to find new ways of promoting and showing uh, their work. That's actually a good way to to start our little podcast. Uh, beyond wine, what would you say was the main difference between organizing an uh, exhibition that was, it wasn't a gallery, but it was online first, and what would be the difference from organizing a traditional exhibition? It made uh, three times more work to do uh, a show both physically and digitally. Uh, I know it might sound completely absurd, but uh, it is a completely new territory where basically everything is possible. So you need to, first of all, consider what makes sense as a tool for your message and for your project. So not all tools are relevant for every project. So uh, depending on what you want to achieve, depending on the, on the nature of your work, depending on the characteristics of your art, uh, you need to think carefully which tools you can use and of course things that fit your brand so um there are so many things like uh there are so many things first of all to show your exhibition so if you have from online showrooms to 3d tours to um creating avatars that navigate in your uh in your exhibition you have these virtual showrooms where you can actually put works and you have a created virtual room there are different things out there and um i think it's very important for the first uh, part to choose the right tools and uh to uh, use them properly um the second very basic uh, part is that uh, the difference between physical and digital is the fact that uh you need to be completely all the time online and uh help your exhibition pushed and promoted so um actually uh when in the occasion that you would do press conference in a live exhibition and then you would be done after a couple of days let's say uh this does not exist in the online world so uh you really have to stay tuned you really have to be persistent into uh consistent also it's very important so you need to be consistent in regards to your uh, posting rhythm, in regards to your content quality, in regards to your visual identity. Um, and uh, of course, you need to establish yourself a little bit. You know, I mean, you know, you need to be consistent in order to establish yourself and in a sense, be able to hold your audiences interested and interested in your work. Because I think when it comes to art, uh, it's not like a normal product. Uh, you long-term uh, engagement with the public and long-term uh, communication with your audiences is uh, very important. And I think the digital world offers this opportunity quite a lot, but it's you need to be very persistent. And you always need to be uh, very creative in your content. So for example, you um, can't really post the same thing twice or you can't say the same story, the exact same story two times because it's gonna be boring and uh, your online audiences will be uh, very, it will be immediately detached from uh, your content. So um, I think uh, uh, this is actually quite a difference. And um, of course, uh, you need to take care of some technicalities like having high quality pictures uh, from the very first moment. You need to actually, my advice would be to always have your content ready from the very, very beginning, have it all, everything organized in folders, know exactly what you're gonna do when you're gonna do it how you're gonna do it and in this case uh, not lose your rhythm when it comes to the frantic rhythms of uh, the digital world and you know we would be focused on just this idea of getting as much people into the um, the 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 opening you know the 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 vernissage per se and that really doesn't happen with a digital exhibition you need to really plan out your your um your content in advance because you you need to follow a, a calendar into that you know so uh would you share a little bit about how you uh created this uh, content calendar yes so basically i 
pushed a lot in the beginning. Everybody to send me uh, some uh, pictures of all their artworks that were going to be exhibited in the exhibition, plus uh, text about their work. And uh, this text, I put everything in uh, in, a, in a word drive, in a word document. All the text together, all the pictures shared our artist name. So for you, it would be something like divide your artwork per series or per year, depending on how you want to show your work, depending on how it fits your the nature and concept of your work. And then after I put everything on a Word document, I uh, edited and I restructured everything in a, in a correct, in a grammatical way. In a, when there were typos, I put it into a Word editor. I saw if there were mistakes in the text, I edited them. And very important was that I put everything in the same format so you had the hashtags you had uh the bio you had uh the the umbrella concept with, which was let's say uh, meet the artist and we had meet the artist live so meet the artist was uh, every day i was posting uh there were 50 artists as i said and with 100 small uh, small format artworks so every day i was posting one artist i was writing their bio underneath on the on, on instagram and I was uh, repeating the link of the exhibition because things get lost in the digital world. That's what I mean with persistent. So in every post you have the link, you remind the people where they can contact you, how they can contact you. Um, I put pictures, high definition pictures and hashtags. And afterwards, while this was being it was posted on this on a daily basis, I um, I also had the Meet the Artist Live series, which were uh, interviews with the artists uh, on Instagram Live. So it's had amazing feedback. And I would also suggest you to look into these kinds of formats uh, where you can actually talk about your work uh, without having to move or anywhere. That was so impressing uh, that uh, wherever you are, no matter what you do at the moment, you can just grab your phone, find an empty wall and sit on the front and have an artist interview. And um, this, uh, this, um, this footage was available then on IGTV and IGTV has a huge outreach. So we got so many views, we got like uh, 160 views the first uh, one hour that it was up on something. I don't even know anymore how many it has, but uh, it was very interesting. And uh, I think this is such very, um, a very sustainable way of doing it. And um, I would uh, also, of course, uh, suggest that um, you uh, already know what you want to say about every picture. So uh, sometimes from the text I received, it was not really clear what it was about. It was very general. So you have to, you had to ground it down to uh, a specific message that had a relation to the exhibition. And uh, this is where actually the work comes in. A bit, you know, like this conceptual work to relate things, to make everything connected to each other. And uh, I think as artists is very important. And as a curator also, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's important to show that everything is connected to each other and uh, I call this the ecosystem for me this word fits my work very well because I have different things that uh, relate to each other and they have uh, common threads between each other but for artists is also what I also always suggest because I'm also a consultant artist consultant and writer I always say my art is uh, you need uh, to make sense <laughs> let's say uh, so that's uh, that's the best tip I can give from my experience and uh, from all the things I have uh, done so far yeah, and it just feels like what you did is how every artist should go ahead with communicating their art. Because you know this, and I know this, uh, working with artists is a fucking nightmare, you know? Uh, just like getting them to send you their CV, and their CV is like bad written, and it's like, write a little bit about your art, and they say like, yeah, this is a blue painting. And I was like, oh, cool. That, that's not a very yeah. good sales pitch. So I think yeah. that just uh, these online exhibitions and this this shift into online just put into to the spotlight the importance of artists uh, to tell their story to to do some storytelling, you know, because or else you know it would be just like a, a JPEG on on Instagram, you know, it doesn't have any context, it doesn't communicate, and you don't understand how that is part of a bigger exhibition. You don't understand what the artist wanted to say, you know, and I've heard a lot of artists going with this idea that, oh, no, the viewer needs to discover what I wanted to mean with the art. And that's completely bullshit. You know, it's like Nike doesn't, you know, do billboards where you're like, oh, yeah, 
whatever you want to think about this shoe. You know, they 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 construct uh, a branding and 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 a, a discourse and 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 a speech about their brand, and they have total ownership over their brand communication and their brand language. And I think that we as artists should do that too. Each one of us as artists is an individual art brand. You know, so we need to 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 be consistent with our brands from from a, a text point of view for quality, for the type of images we use, the the brand colors that we use. As you can see on on my on this video right now, everything is pink. Why is everything pink in all my videos? Because people will see like, oh yeah, it's the art dude that talks about art and uses like pink fonts in his videos. So that's a branding decision, you know. So so as an artist. I think that this, what I'm going to, is I think that this digital exhibition format is way less forgiving of artists that just show up in the gallery with a painting and it's like, okay, my job as an artist is done. Okay, Vanessa, you, yeah. you do the rest. It's actually uh, very problematic to work with artists who do not share um, this, this realization, let's say, that uh, the work not finished there so we had uh, communication problems not in this show generally we have we always have writers we always have communication problems uh, we have uh, a lot of difficulty to reach artists uh, whether it's per phone or on email we have problems in in making sure that we have the right material with the right title with the right uh technique and it has to do with printing material specifically, which you cannot take it back. If it's printed, it's printed, it's there. It all has to be done very much in advance. That's why I always actually start quite a lot in advance because I'm kind of prepared about these problems. And um, sometimes it can be quite detrimental also for sales because, um, I don't know, sometimes people think that they're no longer responsible for their work, uh, some in a, in, a, in a strange sense, uh, when they collaborate uh, with you. I'm not saying that this is the case with any of you guys. Just talking very generally from my experience now. Not don't take me wrong. Um, no, and these, I think these guys uh, in this in this audience, they're all super pros. So don't worry about them. Yeah. So I think what what's very important is to realize that. Um, Artists are also uh, a dynamic uh, band, so uh, you can't just uh, sit around and say, yeah, well, the curator does everything now and I, I don't need to do anything, I don't even need to post anything about the show, because actually this leads to, at the very end, that collaboration, and maybe the person will not work with you again, or the gallery, or whatever. So, um, and what you were saying about this, um, this uh, is interesting because um, I actually, um, I, I forgot about it now. I have to think about what I wanted to say. Yes, I actually wanted to say that artists have the perfect profession for creating content. I mean, like if you're a company that sells toothbrushes, I mean, I don't know, for sure you can make content about it. But for me, it's completely difficult to come up with topics to make that's just super interesting to clients but artists i mean come on you have so many things to talk about i mean like when i'm at a year visit, at a year visit i'm like pumping with content ideas like oh this and this and this and that and i'm bombarded with ideas and I, what i always tell my clients when we do the coaching course is to make a mind map it's where you can start for example because it can be very overwhelming you know all this theory blah 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 do this to that it's okay but i mean you need a very practical starting point to get a bridge the string and start from somewhere so for me my tip would be to um start with a mind map so put your project in the middle or put an idea that interests you and start relating your ideas together start seeing the structure and the architecture behind your thoughts and um there string you can see that you have so many things to talk about in every string and uh you can create content ideas from that and um you can concept conceptualize uh, some sort of uh, marketing strategy or anything. So I think that it starts very much from the person itself, her herself or himself, because I I hear 
seeing all the time that you're like yeah, the artist uh it's, it's sell, selling it selling your art out if you're doing marketing and stuff and i just don't get it because actually if you do this mind map you will realize that it all starts from your truth so you write down your truth you relate ideas that have to do with your truth then you just have a perfect and very individual marketing strategy that can bring you lots and lots of success yeah it's like you you're as an artist you know you you are not a painter you're an artist that means you're an art business and selling your product is is such an important part as creating the product you know it's not that tesla stops as making cars and then like okay yeah that's it we only make cars no they make and sell cars so we as artists we need to make and sell art and yeah what you said about content ideas for artists it's super easy because we are all artists so we think like oh yeah it's just another day at the art factory but for most normal people you know because you know know the artists the non artsy people uh what we do is utterly fascinating it's it's like magic we grab you know like piece of paper some crayons boom million dollar painting bam and a lot of people don't understand how that works and and for a side i do think that it plays a lot to the oh so mysterious you know artists you know it's like oh it's such a mystery of how artists can can you know uh be artists and how it works oh it's magic but um what we should be doing is better educating our audience so we can also shift the perception that it's not only super expensive artworks there's also affordable stuff there's more expensive cheaper stuff editions prints merchandising so uh we just being more active on the long term on on social media and telling our story and creating content on the long term that helps educate a new generation of art buyers that are not any more russian oligarchs they're normal people that maybe have a couple thousand dollars or even less to spend and they want to support an amazing emerging artists and not buy you know a shitty damien hirst museum print you know they want to rather for the same money buy something directly from an artist that you know is not trying to buy their fifth house you know it's trying to to maintain a sustainable career so yeah that's a uh, very interesting because actually uh we are at the moment where this digital evolution takes phase finally like it has a very showed itself finally and uh there is a very a huge increase in online sales now uh, according to archie um archie uh reports also and online galleries keep uh keep, um as a, how do you say like uh, they become more and more and as many galleries have actually shifted from um physical parting digital parting and uh it's the time where you actually have to invest on your uh online presence and by saying online presence i mean a properly functioning website a uh, certain color scheme that you're using a certain language that you're using visual and linguistic language um, you need to invest on your uh, storytelling and first of all you need to think what your story is and that's I think where maybe uh, the problem might be that uh, for some artists it might not be clear what they want to say with their art and um, in my coaching class when we are starting we talk about um, what's your truth what do you want to say with your paintings and you know it takes a lot of time actually figure this out it's, it's a real a real thing and um you know you first when you ask the person um why do you do your art you're doing they tell you uh well because i'm traveling and i see things and i want to put the things on a canvas and then you're like why do you want to put the things on canvas and then they say uh because it makes me feel free and then uh, you say like why does it make you feel free you know like you have this series of questions where this person is and then the artist is like okay you know like uh, the beginning is very strange but then the artist just realizes that there is so many layers in that and then uh, when we discuss about it and we finally get to the very 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 core of their practice 
feel so relieved and they feel that finally it makes sense and they can put it out there and they actually know what this whole thing is about. And I think that's a very important step for everyone's career to actually figure out why they're doing what they're doing and why uh, does it look like it does. And I don't think it's chance. I believe that there's a spontaneous way of creating, but I don't think that... Um, it has a concept, it has a subconscious reason why something is happening. And the first step into getting to know your brand is to let get to know your essence and your truth in your as an artist, in your work. Yeah, and that's just like the foundation of your whole business. It's it's your story, it's it's you, it's why you do it. And upon that you just build another blocks of of your whole business your marketing campaign will drag directly from from your why as an artist you know so it's, it's it's like embedded into all of your art career the why who what where when you know it's it's like that is the the first column that you build up into to uh building your art career and the whole communication and telling the story out of it you know so so a very interesting uh video the other day uh about social selling there was a professor of harvard or something like that who was explaining the secret of success behind apple and he said that well most companies they advertise what they're selling and not why they're selling it so people are no longer interested in knowing what you're doing they're interested in know why you're doing and that's the foundation of social selling selling when we talk about social selling we also talk about social media so if you connect these two concepts if you know the concepts of social selling and you know your story then social media is just a tool we shouldn't see social media as the, as the destination so you're like shit i have to post on instagram again and uh, like feeling stressed and anxious about the something point if you feel like that it's not the right time to do it but if you have a story then social media marketing just follows it's a tool that follows your idea it's not a destination in itself and i think that when people realize this it's becoming very clear that it's actually not such a nightmare so um yeah the thing is the thing is people consider this this social media as 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 the ends you know but it's a mean to an end i always tell my artists you know don't focus about how many followers you have in social media. Focus about how you grab followers from social media into your newsletter or to your website. You know, social media is just a vanity game. It's just a tool to grow your career as an artist. It's not like, you know, it's not, the objective is not being Instagram famous. The objective is using Instagram to grow your career as an artist. So it's not exactly. as like, oh, I need 20,000 followers to, to grow my career and whatnot. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, 20,000 followers would be hella nice. But if you don't have a product, if you don't have a website, if you don't have a newsletter, uh, very few little, very few people are going to DM you wanting to buy work directly from Instagram. You need to create the whole ecosystem around that to make sure that Instagram is a tool that is working for you as a professional artist. No. Yeah, and we should not forget that it's not only about you that you have to create the content. For example, if you're doing paintings about uh, the moon or something, you can just publish also content that relates to the moon. Say why, what moves you, you know what? When you start an artwork, you have a thought. You just don't just start from nowhere, you know? So you have a thought, you have a trigger, you have a stimulus, you have a memory, you have an experience, you have, you heard something on the radio, you read something on the newspaper, Whatever. you met an old friend you remember something so everything has a trigger behind it and uh, i think that this trigger is again uh, a way to create content to create a story and i think that the challenge here is to realize that that and to get outside this uh small comfort zone of saying okay this is something private because it might actually not be something private because most of the time it's not private because the experience you had for sure relates to other people as well. I mean, many people will have had your, the same experience as you, and it's a shame not sharing it with the other people because other people love connecting to each other, and your experience can be the bridge to your content, your audience. Sorry. Yeah, and and let's be honest. You know, we're not we're we're not selling a pair of sneakers here. We're not selling you know H and M T-shirts. 
we need to create an emotional connection with, with our audience or else they're not going to buy this pretty things that we have for sale because, you know, we, we, we need them to think that, oh, I'm buying this because it has this, this meaning and it's from this artist that does work about this. So we need to connect emotionally with our audience as artists or else it's, it's a no sale. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen unless you're like a, a super famous artist that art that people are buying their artwork as an investment, you know, and they don't care about, you know, oh, this artwork is about the starving refugees. It's like, oh, no, this artwork is going to be worth 20 times more in, in five years. That's a different type of buying. And, and I don't know if anybody that is is in this podcast listening or as a guest is in a position where their artwork is bought as an investment. Now it's bought as a emotional commodity. It's something that you buy because it makes you feel nice, because you like the artist, because you like the artwork, and because it looks nice in your wall. You know, so anything could be used as decoration for a wall, but you need to create an emotional connection telling why this thing is the best thing to have on your wall because there's a true artist behind it that is doing work about a theme that resonates with the buyer. So uh, selling art without telling a story is impossible. Why? Why is why is the the urinal that I want that I go in a bar unvaluable, but the one that Duchamp put into a gallery is valuable? It's because it has a story behind it. Because you know Duchamp wanted to make a joke about that and put it in a new context with a new story, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're, we're just making pretty pictures, but if you make pretty pictures with the right context and with the right story, we can sell them for millions of dollars or, or less or thousands, you know. But. Yeah. And I think selling is actually, again, not a, an end in itself, a destination. So you shouldn't get stressed by thinking like, oh, I need to sell, I need to sell. Why don't I sell? Why does my neighbor sell more? And we are not, uh, we are getting the same idea. So what's happening? You know, it's about you only need to care about your content your uh your values and as an artist and your own personal positioning in the world in relation to different topics and topics that penetrate your work and then selling when you have the right strategy selling is also the aftermath of it so it should happen automatically and that's where we are actually that's where we have to focus yeah yeah it's like as an artist you should create the perfect trap you know yeah, where people exactly. can follow you on social media get into your newsletter get a couple of emails get a special discount code and buy from your art you, you're not bringing you're not grabbing people and putting them in the middle of your trap you need to create the perfect trap and let people come alone to your trap people hate being sold things but people love buying things so um, I, I even would go as far as say that as an artist, our, our main goal is not to sell art, but to convince people to buy it, you know, which is the same thing, but phrased differently. So I, I think we could also uh, ensure that. Uh, we got time for like one last yes. block. Um, I, I would like to ask, you know, I'm a starting artist, you know, I never exhibited in my life. I never sold anything. <laughs> not um you know day one of like my professional art career what what should i start focusing on how, how do i go from painting as a hobby and to transforming that into professional career big question don't take these clients <laughs> oh i'm kidding um yeah well actually um you mean like a person who has just finished university or a person who does it for a hobby and then wants to jump into professional career? I don't believe in art university. I've been there, done that, waste of time. But could be a, a, somebody that, that makes art in a way and wants to start building that as a business or, or, as, ah. or, you know, or, or jumping their career from university into a professional artist because... They don't uh, teach the you very first university. thing, uh, the very first thing, because I actually had the client uh, exactly with uh, this profile uh, very, very lately. Um, it was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, the first thing would be to get your own demons, so get your own stereotypes. Uh, I've seen that the worst problem 
words you know what i mean like a, a very uh bad problem can be that you have your own stereotypes and you stick to them so for example stereotype can be something like um marketing is not for artists or uh, i need a gallery otherwise i'm not worth anything or uh get into the small hole of thinking like why does this person have a uh, gallery and not me her work or his work is not as good as mine etc don't get into this uh process of comparing yourself to others uh don't get into the process of uh valuing uh, your work in terms of uh, the art world as it is in strict terms so don't value your work in relation to how many gallery representations you have or uh, how many people uh, contact you or something like this first the first thing when you start is your content your story what do you want to say with your work and why do you do it the way you do it so um and then you can worry about the rest. So, I mean, you start with the foundation, start with your truth, with your content, you start with what you want to say, and then you move on from that. The second step would be to look at it very professionally. So you need to be professional in the way you're working. Professional means good website, good portfolio, good images, functioning contact forms, make people, make it easy to people to find your contact details on your website, don't have broken images, don't have broken contact forms, have a newsletter, um, send a newsletter uh, when you have news, um, publish your late, update your website, very important. So have the latest news, the latest pictures, um, have uh, uh, links to your social media, very obvious on your homepage. So basically make it very, if you can, just follow the six second rule, which means, make it possible for people who visit your website and or your social media to find your contact details in six seconds um and then from uh, then onwards you need to take care of your uh of your pr so you need to get out of the stereotype of artists do not contact galleries or artists do not contact curators or dealers or buyers you should do that you should do it discreet, discreetly and what i mean with that is like if you want to get to a gallery if you want a gallery if you're in love with a gallery if you see oh my god this gallery fits my work so well don't contact them immediately wait a little bit follow their actions see what they're doing how they're doing it what they're interested in see if these interests fit with you with yours uh and find ways to approach them in a way that is beneficial for both sides so what you always need to keep in mind is that what you, it needs to be a win-win situation. If you want to ask for something from someone, you need to be able to give something back if it's about a collaboration. So if it's a super duper gallery in front, in Paris and it's super and you want to be there, try to persuade them why they should take you. If they, don't, uh, if they don't talk to you first, I mean. So if you feel like it's a little bit difficult, just try to think of ways that you could profit from your work as well. So let's think in more, you need to think in more collaborative terms, in more team team, team aspects of uh, your art career, and uh, all this uh, all these things. Um, and uh, of course, to have a statement, you know, the basic stuff like having a statement, having a proper CV. Always keep all your things in both PDF and your website. Uh, always have a test catalog of your artworks with title dimensions, uh, blah blah blah. All the things have it if possible on the Google so you can share the link and edit it anytime try to share as less pdf files as possible because things change and then you need to write to people again uh take care of your press like write press releases for your shows or if somebody else writes them for you make sure that you share them with important people try to build a journalist database from social media that's very very important um and I'm telling you that people are happy when you keep them on track. And that's the greatest realization I've ever done. People are happy when you try to, when you give them value, because writing to people, inviting them to the shows, 
keeping them updated about what you're doing gives them value they think that you care about them and they feel that you want to uh share this experience with them and they're happy and they will give you something in return so uh, i think uh we just need to think of art as any other profession in a very generic sense but some 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 um how can i say some principles of other professions and other sectors are also true in the arts. So if you want to give, you will have to take. You can also take, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's. I think most of the time that it is a mentality process that needs to take place in, before you start. I think. Okay. Yeah, it's just like you want to be a professional artist. You need to play the role of a professional artist before exactly. you reach there. So fake it to make it, you know, have a dope ass website, write a good press release, good uh, artist statement, you know, just like look more professional than you are. If, if your CV doesn't have 20 exhibitions on it, you know, make it look like you're an artist that deserves 20 exhibitions on their CV by, by acting in a professional manner. Uh, and uh, I, I think with, with that, uh, we can open up the, um, the room for some, some, some talks, for some, uh, for some questions. So I, I know that everybody here will have a lot of, of questions and, and probably has already been getting a bunch of value from this. So community, what you want to ask Vanessa? <laughs> no, nobody has a any questions. This is a one once in a one time, once in a lifetime kind of thing. I have a question. Yeah. Yes. About the the you were talking about the content and and having um, a story or meaning behind your artwork, almost finding. Um, like your your very bottom layer, uh, but not all of my artworks have this intense meaning to them. Sometimes I create an art piece because it looks beautiful and it doesn't really have a message. Um, how do I market that? How do I use, what type of content do I use to say this is actually just a pretty picture and I want you to like it? Well, when I was talking about the bottom truth, I was talking more about the person. So uh, not every artwork needs to have this very secret layer of meaning, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, you had in the uh, Renaissance where the very bottom was a bit di diagonal, which meant that there might be a secret religious uh, symbol or something. I'm not talking about this at all. I'm just talking about the truth of the person, the truth of your character, the truth of your personality, who you are as a person and how it relates to your work in general. And if you can connect it to some specific pieces every now and then, it gives an extra value to your to your statement. But for definitely don't need to have this for every single piece. It would also be too heavy. And what you can do actually, what you just said is already a story. It's just a beautiful painting just say that you know like uh you can say uh you can actually twist and turn everything into your into a story and that's uh if you say if you can if you could say the beautiful part of it because you say just the painting you can just say you know like i normally i create this in my work but this time i've just decided to let myself go completely and free my mind and create something like a redeeming piece which will let set me free and that's already a story and i find a pretty good one you know yeah it's like i just want to reiterate you know it's like if if the artwork doesn't have a big meaning you know it could have a great story so if it's like uh, i know your work so it would be probably like a very nice sunset so you could talk about how you were walking down Mauritius, you know, without expecting anything, having a day off, not thinking about art. Boom, beautiful sunset, and he decided to talk about that. Another way would be to be talking about like the behind the, the scenes of how you made that artwork. So if it doesn't have a, a big story, you can talk about, you know, the 
the, the technical aspects of how you photograph that one or, or any special editing that you did or um, you know, the, the, the telling the story of how you came into making that artwork. You know, if, if the artwork doesn't have a, 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 you know, a, a meaning, you know, it still has a story. So. A story right, can also thank be you, thank you. A story can also be that you just posted a picture which you actually completely hate. So uh, that's actually a very interesting story as well, because it's not, a it's not a positive story, it's a negative story. In the sense, we all relate to failure, we all relate to being ashamed, to being um, embarrassed by our own work, by something we said and we did. So this is actually an experience which is common to every human person. I, I, I refuse to believe there's a person on earth that hasn't felt ashamed or embarrassed at some point in their life. And you have no idea how many people will relate to that. So from also negative experiences or from an unfinished painting, which you just hate and you put on your storage room for 10 years and you decided to get out and repaint with new ideas, that's already an amazing story I would love to read, for example. So, uh, thing in art historical terms when we talk about meaning. So that's exactly again a problem a problem of mentality. When we talk about meaning, it doesn't mean that it has to be a stick with a Prussian blue. It means uh, that uh, we say our own story and the more original it is, the better it is. So forget about uh, the art historical terms. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the genuine story. Yeah, and telling your story is one of the easiest way to get your audience to connect with you, you know, because it feels like you're talking one on one, you know, it's like, yeah, this is a geek clip print 50 by 70. There's a sun in it. That's, that's not a good way to connect with your audience. But, you know, telling the story of a lazy Sunday in Mauritius, where, you know, you were just well, going for a walk without expecting anything and this artwork came to fruition, that's already a, a sales pitch, half done. So tell yeah. the story. Don't forget that uh, people buy things that make them feel um, in a way that they want to feel. So uh, if you are a very busy businessman and you find a painting which talks about um, carelessness and uh, chilling out and enjoying life, that is extremely attractive for a person like that. I have a question. Yes, please. We were talking about the importance of, of building relationships with people and, and, and being beyond the sale just to get the message out about the art. What kind of relationship uh, support do you need to have with people who are your collectors? How do you how do you keep that relationship alive after the sale or after the event? Well, that's actually quite a complicated question. There are many different ways, and uh, you need to keep in mind uh, generally that uh, there's actually no recipe for a digital strategy or a strategy generally. What is important is that you try out different things and you see what works for your career and for your own nature of work. So uh, in this case, um, you need to nurture the relationships uh, via email if you don't know them personally. If you know them personally, it would be good to do things like uh, private atelier visits and offer some cake or tea where you nurture this personal relationship or you can organize private viewings in the gallery for them and give them value for sure. What people love is when they get value and they feel like they're treated differently as the others um and that's especially true for people of let's say higher social uh social uh how you layers so depending of course on what kind of people your clients are you need to take into consideration what could be their interests what could be their um their um passions, what are their time uh, limits, uh, if they're too busy or they're not, so you can think about when to do a sort of event. You can actually also discuss with them what they like, if they would have, um, if they would up for, uh, let's say, a dinner, if you know them, or if you know them well, or if you don't know them well, maybe like a get to know each other kind of, uh, of uh, event. And um, collectors love getting to know each other, they also exchange opinions and expertise and they want to see what they're 
editors are doing, let's say, and if they are uh, also collecting the same artists, there's one extra reason why would would uh, be interested in getting together. And I think in this part you need to be very creative. But uh, the basic. Uh, Bottom line is like uh, email work, sending a newsletter, always keeping them in, keeping them updated about what you're doing. If you have upcoming shows, uh, whether it is a digital exhibition, whether it's an article on the newspaper about your work, whether an important curator was at your atelier this morning, uh, if a, if a journalist was at your atelier this morning because he's interested in writing about your work or something. So every, all these things need to be perceived as opportunities to. Um, to broadcast some activity and the most important thing is to be active so collectors love active work active artists because it means that if an artist is active they're gonna grow and if they're gonna grow they're gonna sell more and if they're sell more they're gonna be more and more expensive which means at the end of the story they would have bought something for thousand euros and in three years it would cost ten thousand so this means for the collector something extremely valuable and that's super cool for them I, I i'll go a step forward there um think about you know when when you you fly a lot with a certain uh company you know like an airline and they add you to like their members club where you have like special discounts and access to the vip lounge and you know special benefits and access to special events you know and you know they 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 give you discounts with with uh uh renting a car so i think that long term you should start thinking about your client base as a exclusive membership club that grants access to you personally so they they buy an artwork but then they become a part of the john bishop fan club so you could host uh, something just like that, this, you know, like a, a, a discussion panel, you know, where you you talk about your art or you talk about new projects and only invite collectors, you know, to that. You can offer a discount code exclusive for their second purchase. So like 15% off of their new artwork, um, you know, and when this all is over, yeah, inviting people to your studio goes, does magic. People, people flip out when they go to an art studio, you know, it's like, it's where the magic happens. So, so people really enjoy, and, and just giving that one-on-one -on -one access to you as an artist, I think it's, it's already a very good strategy into building these long relationships because they want to hang out with the artists, you know, and, and it's amazing because then they go and they have a uh, dinner with friends and they ask, oh, what's this painting? It's, oh, this is John Bishop, you know, I, I was just in his studio last week, he invited me over for some cheese and wine, you know, and then it's like a story that they can tell about how they know an artist because knowing an artist is very cool. So if they can tell their friends that, oh yeah, I know this artist and he invited me, I bet I can squeeze you into the guest list of his next open studio or whatnot. Just creating these opportunities for the um, collectors to feel special. I, I think yes, that's, exactly. that's the idea, you know. These are maybe not at the level where we deal art, but, you know, collectors tend to be uh, richy people, you know, so they can have anything they want. They can buy anything they want. You need to offer them something that they cannot buy. They cannot buy your friendship. Yes. They cannot buy access to you. They cannot buy uh, behind the scene information into your art practice. So stuff that they cannot buy. I guess we have to time yeah, for to... one last question. Or we can go yes, into... I have one. I wonder what uh, do you think about writing a poem as a description of a painting? Is it a good idea or? Mm, you mean for the portfolio or for for social media or for what? Or just for the specific painting. I, I want to write a poem as a description. Not only, but uh, is it a good idea or? I definitely find it a good idea. I just don't know how you manage to fit it into the title of the JPEG. Well, you can use it as a description when you put it as a caption for online, social media yeah. or as a description yes. of the work when you're listing it online. Yeah, I, yes. I, I think that, that that could be part of, you know, the, the, the storytelling, you know. Yes, uh, yes, yes. 
Uh, I, I would recommend I it's a great also idea, yeah. also pairing that poem with the more technical text, you know, like a like a little bit more of a layman, you know, if you're going to write a very complex poetry, maybe put a paragraph explaining more in a literal way what the artwork is about. But it, it also allows to show, you know, another facet of you as an artist, you know, you the poet, yeah. you know, you the po the painter. So. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I guess with that uh, is basically it. Where can they find you on the internet, Vanessa? Yeah, um, you can find me on my website, obviously. So if you type, uh, let me write my name on the chat. So uh, you can just find me with my name. And uh, you can also find my uh, Instagram uh, here. Let me just give you a couple of links. Yeah, th this all will be in the description of the, the podcast as well for people that are not here with us. Yep. Well, so basically just uh, my... Uh, uh, my Instagram and uh, my website, but with my name, you can just find uh, 10 pages on Google search uh, that would be a problem to track me that's, down. And, that's, um, that's the main thing, you know, you got to be easy to find, you know. I am very easy to find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, then Vanessa, I would like to thank you a lot for taking your time and joining us, you know, uh, talking a little bit about what you learned over the last years, how you do your thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody's gonna really take a lot of value from this and uh, if I know the audience well everybody's been taking notes ferociously while you spoke so thank you I'm sorry. thanks a lot for joining us and artists oh, I'll be seeing all of you next weekend next week um, with another episode of our podcast so guys have a good evening Yes, yes, thank, you thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.